Hello and welcome to Women in Ministry TV. I'm the host Jacqueline Battle. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And today my guest is Minister Angela Washington. Welcome, Angela, to Women in Ministry TV. Good morning, Jacqueline. We are blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, coming on to share your ministry with the viewers of Women in Ministry TV. You and I got to know each other through Christian Women in Media. Uh, that's how we got connected. I saw your information and reached out to you. And I thank you so much. Now, Miss Washington, for those who do not know you, tell them a little bit about yourself, your ministry, and how you come to know the Lord. Jen, uh, my grandparents at this church. But it was something about the Methodist that just wasn't working for me. And I ended up going to a holiness church one night with some friends of ours, apostolic. And the message was just right. And I was 12 years old and I joined that church. And that was the beginning of my first transformation. I was an ordained missionary in that church at the age of 12. And I spoke at other churches and it just gave me a sense of somebodyness. I learned what God really was. I learned that if I just believed hard enough, if I prayed long enough, there would come a change, even as a kid. Because I remember after I had joined the church, I got uh, I got baptized that night. You know, it used to be when you got you joined the church, you got baptized that day, that night, or whatever. And I got baptized that night, and I got the pneumonia. And I remember laying in my bed, and I'm sick, and I'm throwing up and everything, and, and I got a fever. And my grandma said, Angie, you all right? I said, Grandma, God, go kill me, Grandma. She said, <laughs> If you ain't bad about tomorrow, I'm going to take you to the doctor. I'm like, don't oh, hear me. And you know how children are. We just believe hard. It's, it's just sorry that as we get to be adults, we get distracted by life and we don't believe it's hard as, it's true. as a child. Well, that was my first transformation. I was. Uh, so you got healed. You was healed the next day. When Jackie, when I went to the doctor next, that was my best day in like a whole week. When I got up that morning, I'm outside playing in front of the doctor's office. It was like grandma wasted her money taking me to the doctor's office because um, we live 30 miles from town. So she had to pay someone to take us to the doctor's office because we didn't have a car and uh, we didn't have a horse or anything like that. <laughs> well, you know, I grew up in the country. We, we had a horse, but they had sold a horse. You know. Now you talk like you sort of aged with, but I, I didn't think you'd be back there when they had horses and carriages now. No, horses and carriages. We did have a horse. Um, we had 10 acres of farmland. We had corn and stuff. Okay. We had an outhouse in the back. We had a two-seater outhouse tank. Now, most, most people are like outhouses. What is that? I like. I, I think I, we lived with the outhouse for maybe one or two years when I was growing up, and that was it. And we finally got indoor plumbing, so I totally get. It. <laughs> Aunt Rosa had a well at her house, so we had to walk up to her house with the bucket and then drop the bucket of the well down, you know, and, and pour it in out. Yes. You know, wash the clothes on the on the back back there. Yes. In the apron, drop it yeah. and hung them up. And, you know, so that's what I grew up with. We never did get inside the entire time I lived there. And that was one of the reasons why I moved to Jacksonville, Florida, where my mother was, because she lived in the city. There was a laundromat across the street. There was music everywhere. I could get clothes like I wanted to. Um, you know, there was inside plumbing. That was awesome. You know, I could go to concerts and things like that. But also, Jackie... I wanted to get away from the church. I was 13 and a half at that moment. I wanted to do things that other 13 and a half year olds did. I wanted to dance. I wanted to go to parties. I wanted to go to concerts and things like that. I knew I could not do that in the church. And being a hypocrite was not one thing I wanted to do. That was one thing. That was just the first thing in my mind to do. It was better to just walk away to get my license back to the pastor and to walk away and come to Jacksonville. And that's what I did. But in the process of running, I ran exactly to where God gave me my greatest lessons in life. I learned what it was to have a mother that dealt with depression. I learned what it was to not wait for God to make choices for me, for my companion, to make my own choices and fail every time. I learned what it was to have a child out of wedlock, too, out of wedlock, and to have to struggle to take care of them. And I learned what it was to go to college, to have something better for my children, to catch city bus behind city bus, 
walk a many a mile to go to work and to go to college to get my education. And then I moved to Tennessee where my second transformation came. I found a peace of mind, Jackie, for my first time in my life. It's a beautiful thing when you can lay down and not have to hear gunshots, not have to worry about going out the door and somebody trying to do something to you. It's a beautiful thing to have your own car and have a salary job and be a piece at what your bank account is. But my son had a situation and I had to take him back to Florida for a while. And there I learned what it was to put my child's life and everything about his mental health and spiritual health ahead of everything I had ever known. There was another transformation when you see your child hurting and you can't help them, when you put them in counseling and they can't help them, and you have to just wait for the God, for the Lord to help them. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to see your child just break down and cry on your shoulder at the age of 14. And you said, baby, it's just going to be all right. It was tough. But we went through that. And then I came back to Tennessee where I had found that peace of mind. And I joined an awesome church. And that was the next transformation. It's like God is always having us on that spindle. He's that potter, constantly molding us, shaping us. When we got a bend here, we got a snag there, <laughs> shaping us and shaping us and shaping us to where he wants us to be. And every time we think we messed up, he said, no, you didn't mess up. I'm going to fix you up. I needed you to be bent there because somebody else is bent there. I need you to have that snag there because somebody else has that snag there. But I'm going to shape you and mold you like I want you to be. So when you tell your story about your bend and your snag, you will tell how I fixed that bend and that snag. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, that situation turned out. But I just need to mold you for a little bit longer. And he connected me with a church called Old Spring out there in Arlington. And there was my greatest transformation because I learned when I got sick and I had major surgery. And when the water hit my skin jacket, my body hurt all over. When I moved in the bed, I just hurt so bad that even my coworkers just couldn't stand to be in there with me. And when I came home and I laid in that bed for days and days and days, and I realized what I had done in my life, that nothing I could do could help me. My children couldn't help me. I couldn't help myself. And when I got phone calls, because a lot of times I was the one to help everybody else, I just had to say, I can't do you because I can't even do me. And I pray, Jackie, every day. I pray, God, please just heal my body. Lord, just give me peace of mind. Lord, just let this day be better than yesterday because I was hurting so bad. I was in a relationship that was not godly. But God moved that situation out the way. Because sometimes we won't step out of a situation even when we know better. But God says, I got it. I'm going to help you when you can't help yourself. I'm going to move this because you won't move it because I need more time with you. And so he moved a lot of things out of my way. And I learned that I could only trust in him to get me out of my deepest and the hardest situation. And I got to this place, Jackie. It was a place hard to openly admit but I said, I don't care if I live to see tomorrow. I'm going to praise today because today is all I have. This moment is all I have. I actually don't have the entire day. This moment is all I have. And so I'm going to praise today and I'm going to enjoy today. And whatever happens tomorrow, it happens. And if I see it, I see it. But if I don't, I have enjoyed it. And so that's my ministry. My ministry is about my life. My mistakes, my transformation, and touching others so they can transform too. My God, praise the Lord. I mean, transform. And I'm, God has wrote a book about my life and the transformation that God did in me because that's it. A lot of times we go into church and we doing church activities, but we haven't been transformed. Mm -hmm. Until God transform your life, and that's the only difference which you can make, and He, um, you can make in others' lives when you've been transformed, because you can go and help and transform somebody else. So by you saying that word, just brought memories to the book that I wrote, transform, transform your life now. That's the book of business and transforming devotional that God anointed me to write most of those books. 
in maybe less than a week or so. God is so <laughs> faithful how he gets in our lives and transform us and just make us a blessing. Amen. And like you said, when we've been bent, we can go and touch somebody else that has been bent in that same place. We don't want to go through anything because, you know, it hurts and it's painful. But it's not just to keep among ourselves, but it's to go and minister and to strengthen our brother, as the word of God says. And you, you've covered a lot just in that. Now, for those who still do not know you, um, you've got a website, Angel of Words. Tell us about the website and what they can find on that website. Angel of Words is my true identity as a Christian, as a woman, as a person, as a servant. It is about my journey, my entire journey, what I told you, without the outhouse. <laughs> it is about how I joined the church as a teenager and left. It is about how I joined this church here in Arlington, Tennessee, and was transformed to my greatest and strongest person. I have poems on there that people have asked me to write about family members that have gone on to be with the Lord. There are people I befriended on Facebook that I just wrote something because God gave it to my heart and they were very appreciative because God has given me a great gift of words, but he has given me a connection from spirit to spirit. I can feel people hurt. I can feel their joy. I can feel their struggle. Sometimes it's a hard thing to deal with, Jackie, to feel the emotions of another person. Because it's a weight that you carry. Sometimes it's a little heavy. But I'm thankful, even though it's heavy, because people need to know that you feel what I feel. That's about the poetry. When I have poems on there that people read and they say, that's my story. I say, that's your story? Because mm -hmm. that's my story too. God has connected us in so many ways. We are not as different as we think we are. That's true. We look different color. We may have different social statuses. Our parents look different, but we are in essence the same. Amen. We are trying to live this life the best we can and struggle through our heartbreaks and our hurts and trying to help somebody else along the way. I could only imagine what you went through to put your book together because sometimes it's hard to put in print the mistakes we've made. Some people want to be perfect. I don't need to be perfect. Amen. I Telling my children, as I did when I would, when they were growing up, mama failed some classes in college. And if I didn't pass those classes the next time, student loans wasn't going to pay for them classes. <laughs> I made some mistake. Job. I might have said something I shouldn't have said, and I had to apologize. Even with my children, sometimes I had to say, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get angry with you. It was because of A, B, and C. Because I want them to know that it's okay to apologize. It's okay that you made a mistake. Exactly. The problem is when you don't apologize, when you know you made a mistake, I'm older than you and I love you enough to say, baby, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my website shows my true personality. Um, I like writing poetry because number one, it's a gift. I don't have to think on it. It's just natural. And at times, God just took my brain until they just, it just hurt because I would just wrote <laughs> four poems, five poems. I remember, Jackie, one time I wrote 10 poems in my bedroom one night. My God. And another night I wrote 12. And it, I was just exhausted. And then I could re relate to when I saw people on television saying that they stayed up all night long because they were artists. They were thinking something, writing something, painting something doing some kind of music, and they were caught up in the moment. Sometimes you can be caught up in the moment that God puts you in that season of thought. You know, I go to church, and I have an anointed pastor, Pastor Michael Martin. And pastor can be preaching, and I'm just writing all over the church programs, Jackie. Whatever he's saying is sparking words in my head. Mm. To the point, sometimes I ask somebody to sit next to me, can I get your program? Because I ran out of paper. Girl, you need to take a book to church. <laughs> I, started journal. I started taking a journal because things are rolling around in my head, but it's messages for somebody else. Somebody else knows that you have a loss you haven't dealt with. You haven't dealt with grief properly. I know this feeling personally. When my dad, my sister, my stepmom, and nephew died at once, Jackie, it was hard to look at four caskets at one time in Soberton, Georgia. When you sit there and look at the person that gave you life, your sister that shares the same bloodline that you do, 
your stepmom that you've known as long as you've known your own natural mother. You remember when Jimmy was first born. When you see people that you love and you have to say goodbye all at once and you wouldn't prepare for it. Sometimes you think you cry and you let it go, but it, it, you can lock it in your heart. You try to work your way through it. You try to go to school and get some work done and you don't deal with it properly. But when it finally hits you and you realize I hadn't taken a bath all day. I hadn't brushed my teeth all day. I've been laying in this bed all day long. I think I'm depressed. Why am I depressed? I called the assistant district attorney day in and day out for over a year and a half to see what he's done about this case. Have they charged this young man? What are they going to charge him with? When are they going to go to court? And it had been in my spirit, but I didn't know it. And I had to realize, hey, I'm just going to have to stop calling. I'm going to have to let this go and leave it up to God because Overall, this young man didn't get up in the morning to kill four people. It was an accident. And his weight is heavier than my weight. I got to let this thing go. I got to let God take it. Jackie, I stopped calling. I never asked anybody how the case turned out. Because I really didn't need to know. What I needed to know that God had removed that weight off my shoulder. That's all I needed to know. Mm. Poetry talks about grief. It talks about God's mercy. I'm a speaker as well. I speak a lot at Christian Women in Media in Murfreesboro and some other churches within Memphis where I live. I love to speak into people's hearts, Jackie, because it's, it's a pouring of my spirit into your spirit. We're exchanging emotions. We are exchanging stories. People talk to me. They say, oh, I just love your poetry. I just love what you said because I intertwine speaking and poetry together. Because they all are my message of ministry. We all need healing. But we all need to know that we're not the only one in this battle. And even though you can't see God, you can't hear him, you can't touch him, he hears you. He's touching you. He's loving on you every minute. Just wait and be faithful. And in his time, he'll let you know, baby, I was always there. Amen. I mean, you, I can just sit here and listen to your message. I do want to go into, and I, I just don't want to bring it up, but um, did your family members get killed by gunfire or did they get killed by car accident all at one time? But car accident. Car accident. Okay. So that's what happened. Like you said, he didn't intend to do that when he left that date. And that's so sad. I don't know how long ago that was, but I can only imagine the grief of losing four family members at the same time. That's That's pretty... That's pretty tough. You know what I mean? That's pretty That's tough. Pretty I can relate to you being at the church this Sunday in Texas. Yeah. It, it brings it in reality for me because I've already been there. That was in 2004 when my family died. But when I see events like this, it's one thing to have sympathy, Jackie. But when you have empathy, empathy, it, it brings it home. Yes. When you know that somebody's not going to deal with this well. You can be a person of faith, but we are flesh, and the flesh gets weak. And yes. We need to be surrounded by believers. We got to be surrounded by people that are people of faith, people of patience. You can't tell me when I need to be over this thing. That's true. Say, if you need me, I'm here. Yes. If you need me, I'm here. Because some people, they try to think their timeline is your timeline. No, no, no. Your timeline is not my timeline. That's right. My timeline is when I, do it, I, I can't do it. Yes. But you can. Yes. I, I tried to handle it myself and I messed up. But I need you. And then he's going to give me the right scripture to read. He's going to, when I, when I kneel down and pray and cry, Jackie, and I don't care how my makeup runs on my face, when I don't care how ugly I look, if I got to be in my car, because I'd have been in my car. At times when something was really heavy. And I just sat in my car and cried and prayed and cried and prayed. When you at that spot where you don't care who sees you and what you look like when you just say, Lord, I can't do it. God, I need you right now. Father, 
answer my prayer, God. I'm praying right now, God, that you just because God, I can't tote this weight by myself, but God, I know you will answer prayer because you've been faithful to me all this time. And God, I know you'll do it one more time. But God, I know this is heavy, but God, I know you can do it. When you're there and you're ready to let go, God will come through for you. But you got to be there. That's true. Desperation is the key. Desperation. How bad do you want it? That's in anything in life, woman of God. And you shared your ministry is so touching. And, and I can tell that you, God has anointed you for words because, I mean, it just flows so easily. I mean, you shared a great word today and I can, you can keep on. Do you have anything else that God gave you to share with those who's, who will tune in either now or in the future? I want to share because we believe like the man when he had asked the disciples to pray for his child and deliver his child, but they couldn't. And he saw Jesus and he said, Lord, I went to the one that was supposed to heal my child, but they couldn't. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. There are times when we believe, Jackie, but, but our beliefs is a little shaky because we think that this thing we ask in God, it's a little heavier than everything else we have. Well, everybody else died in my family of cancer, and I don't know if you're going to do it, but God, I want to believe. And so this poem is help my unbelief. Just when we need just a little more strength than what we have. I know you can do it. I ask that you will. If you spoke the word, it would be still. You can cease the pain that seems to pierce my soul. But if you never do, my praise will still be bold. I know you can do it, but help my unbelief. Sometimes my faith will falter when there's no relief. But you and only you can make me understand. No matter my condition, I'm always in your hand. That's what I wanted to share. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. For those of you who've been blessed by this woman of God, as I have, be sure to go to her website, Angel of Words. God has anointed her in that area. God gives gift to me and amen. And she write gifts of poetry for bereavement, for weddings. So if you need her, be sure to reach out to Minister Angela Washington. If you're not following her, I'm sure a Facebook page will be a blessing to you, but do visit her website. Any other words, woman of God? Uh, that you have to share before we sign off today. Well, well, that when you have women's cancer, remember that if you want someone that can pour into the life and the hearts of the people at your church, at your community, at your function, remember me because I know how to share my love, my pain, my hope with you. We all have hurts, men and women. Men hurt like everybody else, but they think I got I to gotta be macho. I got to be leader. I can't show my pain. Brother, I want you to know it's okay. When you with me, we all safe. We can show our pain and we can grow together and you won't be judged. Let me be the next speaker and let us grow together because we are only strong when we help each other. Amen. Amen. And on that note, I thank you guys for tuning in. It's been a tremendous blessing today, woman of God. I've been touched by your ministry uh, to hear it for myself the very first time. A lot of times I don't know these women of God who God has put on the broadcast until they're on this broadcast. And I just sense the presence of God uh, during this time. I am enamored by what I'm feeling in your presence just through the through the screen, through this broadcast has been a tremendous blessing and it's touching me. So for those of you who need a woman to speak, a woman of words, God has anointed her, angelofwords.com. Go to her website, go to her Facebook page and do ask her uh, to come speak. I'm sure you like most people and myself, whatever the love offering is, you don't have an honorarium. Like some people need $10,000 and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure she is whatever gift that God has put on your heart to bless her with a free will offering. Is that what it is? Yes, that's the word that I want. Amen. I'm going to your website. I can't wait to read some of those angel of words that God has blessed you to read, uh, to uh, write. And I can see that coming in a book. I do see that. You take those portraits. That's your book right there. And just put them all in a book. And then, my goodness, 
And um, but anyway, God bless you so much, guys. Don't forget to register a single woman with children, small children, for this Thanksgiving um, fifty dollar Walmart gift card. The deadline to enter that is November the fifteenth. Please email me their name and num- uh, name and information to Women in Ministry TV at gmail.com. A single mom will giving away a fifty dollar Walmart gift card for Thanksgiving to a single mother. Um, um, that needs probably some assistance. And thank you so much, woman of God. I've been tremendously blessed by your words. Don't go into work, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to go to her website, Angel of Words. Um, and she's available for all speaking engage- engagements, women's retreat conferences, and a glow. I'm going to be sure to tell people in a glow because that's who I'm affiliated with about your ministry. God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a marvelous day, everybody. Thank you, Minister Washington. God bless you for tuning in. May you have a marvelous and wonderful day in the Lord. Be safe out there. God bless you. Everybody.